In this episode, we're talking about the three keys to effective investing or trading. So in the last video, we talked about the recent study the University of California did showing that a very high percentage of day traders actually lose money over time. And I gave a little bit of my perspective on what works for me and why I like to hold trades for longer periods of time. Some people call it either swing trading or position trading or longer term investing. And so in this video, I'm going to go in a little bit more detail and show the three keys that I found for effective investing and trading. And before we dive in, I'll just say, you know, again, I'm not a financial or trading advisor. I trade my own capital and, and invest my own money and trading and investing are extremely risky. And like we talked about in the last video, a lot of people lose money in this game. So the biggest thing guys is just don't use money that you can't afford to lose. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. And the first key to effective investing or trading is market selection, right? Trading or investing in a market market where you can find an edge. Now, what does that mean? Well, market selection really boils down to a few things. Uh, the first thing you want to think about is, okay, what is the right market to trade, right? And the way I like to think about this is investing and trading are competitions, right? And you want to think about who's on the other side of your trade. Who are you trading against? Is it retail investors? Is it high frequency algorithms? Is it professional, you know, large Wall Street firms? Uh, the second thing is time frame, right? The length of time that you're holding a trade or an investment, anywhere from a millisecond to years, right? Or decades. Uh, and then the third thing to think about is market conditions. And how do you find favorable market conditions for you? And what that means is basically how price moves, right? Is it choppy? Is it flat? Is it dead? Is it highly volatile? Is it trending? Is it somewhere in between? And so when it comes to market selection, the right market for me, and again, this is based on my personal experiences, I like to ask who am I trading against, right? Is this a market where there's a ton of professionals, a ton of high frequency algorithms like the S&P 500, or is it something where it's mostly retail investors? Is there, you know, emotional money in that market? And I always like to say like the asset doesn't really matter. For example, if you're a fan of Amazon, you're an Amazon prime member, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should just go buy Amazon stock or, you know, trade that stock. It all really boils down to this question question. Do you have a technological edge or a disadvantage, right? And what I mean by that is like, are you trading in a market where you're going up against traders and funds that have high speed algorithms and they, they employ like PhDs and mathematicians and you know, you're, you're competing against that, right? That's what trading is, especially in markets where there's a zero sum game. Like if, if you lose a dollar, somebody else makes a dollar or vice versa, I want to be in markets where I feel like I have an advantage, either my skill set or information, right? Like in the cryptocurrency space in the early days, I felt like I had a big advantage over Wall Street because I had a strong conviction that that was going to be a really big market, which is why I invested early and started trading and really learning that space early. And now Wall Street seems to be catching up. Uh, and that's why I avoid now markets where I feel like I'm at a disadvantage. Like a lot of the, the futures markets, like they're just so hyper competitive that unless I feel like I can go in and I have a leg up, I'm more prone to just avoid those to begin with. Um, and so the next thing is time frame, right? Like talking about the length of time that you're in a trade, right? And my goal, and we talked about this in the last video, it, my personal goal is to capture the biggest price moves with the least amount of orders, right? Because what that's going to do is cut down on transaction costs and margin of error. And I just think the more trades you take, the more opportunities there are to just screw that up or get shaken out by price action, right? That's why I really like to zoom out and look for the much bigger moves where I can stay in a position for weeks or months at a time. And now look, guys, this is the beautiful thing about the market. It's like, you can have an opinion. You might like the shorter term trading or the longer term trading. At the end of the day, you have to do what works for you. And I just know like I'm a really impatient person. And so if I'm trying to like day trade or take short term trades, in a lot of cases I over trade 
or I get emotionally like attached and, and you know, when the market spikes or dumps, like I'll be hypersensitive to that. So for me, it's less stressful to zoom out and kind of ignore all the small intraday movement and focus on the much bigger moves. Again, that's just what works for me. And, and it took me a long time to figure that out. The third thing is favorable market conditions. What does that mean? So for me, favorable market conditions are volatile markets driven by emotional money, right? Compared to what I don't like to trade, which is slow, choppy market conditions, which in my experience will destroy even the best traders, right? Like if you have a market that is just dead flat or really choppy trading in low volume, or even say you're in a bull market, like in the stock market, the S&P 500, but the daily trading ranges are like really small and there's not a lot of volatility. If you think about like, okay, well, where is this price action coming from? Who are the other market participants? A lot of times it's just algorithms like fighting each other. And if you step into there, the odds of getting chopped out are pretty high. So kind of a recap here for my market edge, what I look for is I want to trade highly volatile markets that are driven by emotion, which is why I've been so focused on Bitcoin for, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for the past five or six years. That's been my main focus where I feel like I'm not at a competitive or a technological disadvantage. Right. If I feel like I don't understand the space or the market or, you know, that's why I don't like trade oil or gold really actively or corn or some commodity that I just don't have a really good uh, thumb on the pulse of that market where I spend hours and hours every day researching cryptocurrencies and, and trying to stay up with the latest technology and, you know, what's coming down the line and what the mass uh, market sentiment is and who the players are that are coming into the space and people that are rage quitting and everything in between, right? Like, I feel like I just have a really good understanding of that market. So that's what I focus on. Um, also, I want to hold trades long enough where I can catch the meat of the move, like bigger moves with the least amount of orders. So an example of that is like, for example, looking at the Bitcoin uh, daily chart, like I'm not going to zoom in here and try to over trade this like day trade or like just place a bunch of orders and try to catch every move here. Like if you zoom out, and you can look at kind of the bigger picture, you can see that since really the beginning of the first quarter of 2018, Bitcoin's been relatively flat. So like I have not taken a lot of trades in Bitcoin this year just because it's overall flat. What I really like to do is trade aggressively when we're in a strong trend, right? So like for 2016 and 2017, um, this was just a beautiful market environment to buy dips, buy breakouts, sell into strength, right? So I was a lot more active during this time period, but when the market is like basically dead flat here, I'm not going to over trade and get chopped out in market environments like this. So I hope that gives a little bit of perspective on just why I think choosing your market and choosing the market conditions that you'll trade in is so important because if you skip that, you could end up trading a market where you're at a huge disadvantage or trying to invest in market conditions that just really aren't favorable. Okay. So market selection is number one. Number two is trading and investing strategies. Okay. And what's a strategy? Well, a strategy is basically an approach that you take that fits your market edge, your risk tolerance and your personality. Right. Um, and the way that I like to think about this and the way that I approach the markets is I break up my investing and trading into different capital buckets. So for example, I have one bucket that is super long-term investment, like multi-decade investments, where if I buy like a stock index fund, I'm looking to hold that for 20, 30 plus years and just compound that over time. Then my kind of medium-term bucket is for swing trades and position trades where I'll hold, you know, maybe I'll buy Bitcoin and hold it for two to three years, right? Or or maybe there's like Ethereum in 2016, um, buying breakouts and looking to hold that for a few weeks to a few months, right? And then my other capital bucket is venture investing, right? Or angel investing where I'm risking 100% of that capital. I know the, the risk of loss there is very high, but the reward or the potential payoff is also very high, right? So I look at kind of like my investment capital as a big pie 
And then I say, how much of that risk capital, again, this is money that I can afford to lose. How much will I put in different markets and what are those time frames? And after I've decided where I want to put that capital and in, into what strategies, then I look for trade setups that fit the current market conditions, right? Or the different phases of, of market conditions. And I did a video a while ago talking about like the five phases of the cryptocurrency markets. That's a really good one to kind of see. But uh, basically I have different trade setups if we're in an accumulation phase, like my strategy is basically going to be long-term kind of buy and hold. If we're in an early trend where you're getting great breakouts, good dip buys, then I'm typically like swing trading that and holding those for a few weeks to a few months. Um, or if things are just really choppy or if we're on the backside of a bubble, then I'm going to usually pull back and maybe buy dips, but be like way more conservative on my position sizing. And then for each strategy, strategy in every capital bucket, you want to have a risk management plan that applies to each strategy. So when it comes to risk management, you know, we could talk about this for hours, but it basically boils down to like position sizing, right? Like based on the market conditions, based on the setup, how much are you willing to risk? What are your stop sizes? What are your profit targets? But the idea is to always plan your trade or your investment ahead of time. That way you're, there's no surprises. And then the third key is is your mental game. And this is something that I spend a lot of time reading about and just thinking about. And I think it's one of, if not the most important part of investing in trading, because if your mental game isn't on point, then your strategy and your market selection and all that could go out the window. So for me, a strong mental game means learning to think like a contrarian, questioning everything, right? Like if you see something that's popular in the media, if everybody's like bullish on Google, or Netflix, um, learn to kind of think against the herd. Not that you just want to, you know, if everybody's bearish on a stock that you just want to blindly buy that or vice versa. Um, but just learn to really be a, a thinker, right? Think like a contrarian and always ask the question, why could the masses be wrong? Not that they are, but you know, what could everybody be missing? And a lot of times that's where you can find big opportunity, right? And there's so many examples of this over the past years, uh, you know, like Bitcoin in the early days before Wall Street and, you know, big hedge funds started to get into the game um, or, you know, in the stock market sells off 40 or 50 percent and everybody's terrified right there's just there's so many of these opportunities that come along every year and the more resourceful you can be the more you can just be open to those ideas and when you see a lot of emotion at least for me anytime i see an, a lot of emotion or a lot of hype or a lot of fear around a specific market or niche that's a lot of times where you can find great opportunities um, and then also you want to be able to properly handle and analyze losses right? Not have your ego attached to a win or a loss, right? There's kind of like, I, I like this analogy of using trading or investing as like walking a tightrope, right? If you're walking, you know, a, a really high tightrope and you have this bar that's kind of balancing you on one side, you have fear and hesitation and a lack of confidence. And on the other side, you've got greed and over aggression and hubris. And I think to be a good investor, it's about like walking that tightrope, right? Like being confident and bold when you know what's happening and being able to execute and put, you know, big money on the line when you feel like the odds are in your favor and also not having an ego to where you hold on to losses for too long or you just keep trying to hammer a strategy that might not be effective anymore. So just to recap quickly, Key number one is market selection. You know, for me, it all boils down to, am I investing or trading in a market where I have some sort of edge or am I facing massive disadvantages, either on the technology side or the information side? And if I don't feel like I have a great edge, I'm just not going to participate right? And then number two is your strategy, right? Understanding market cycles and phases and how to find 
opportunity that correlates with timing, right? Because you can be, for example, you can be a great breakout trader, but if you're in a market that's dead and just giving all these false breakout signals, you're going to lose more often than not, right? Um, or if you're just a really impatient day trader and you're in an accumulation phase where really the best strategy is to buy and hold on for a year or two, you know, you're going to get chopped out there too. So that's for me, just kind of the biggest thing that I ask whenever I look at a market, I'm like, okay, what phase of the cycle is this market in and what's the best strategy for this current phase? And then the third key is the mental game, right? Being able to handle losses appropriately, walk that tightrope between fear and greed, and just make sure that you're planning your trades and investments ahead of time and then sticking to that plan, but also being flexible where if something changes in the market, you can make adjustments without letting your ego get hurt. So I hope this video is helpful, guys. If you're interested in taking an assessment of your current mental game, um, I actually put together a quiz and also with the quiz, I put together this uh, manifesto called how to become a confident disciplined trader or investor. So if you haven't gotten that, I'll link it up in the description or here on YouTube. And uh, if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and feel free to share this with anybody that you think would get value from it. So uh, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.